Hi, I'm a Bullis student tutor, and in this video I'm going to be talking about a proof that ISBN 10 check digits, which we discussed in our previous video, detect errors, and specifically transposition errors, or when two digits in the ISBN are flipped during transmission. So a transposition error in a string of numbers occurs if two digits are switched. So in this sequence, 2531, if the 5 and the 3 were switched and it became 2351. And we're going to prove that the ISBN check digit scheme detects all transposition errors and we're going to do this using proof by contradiction. So the statement we're trying to prove is that the ISBN 10 check digit scheme detects any transposition error. So let's start off by making our assumption, which is what we do in proof by contradiction. So we'll assume that there is a transposition error that the scheme does detect, or rather does not detect. So we're assuming that we have two 10 digit numbers, A and B, that are identical except that a sub m, the mth digit of the number a, equals b sub n, and a sub n equals b sub m. And this just means that the m and nth digits are switched in these two numbers. And we're assuming that m does not equal n, and that a sub k equals b sub k for all k that aren't m and n. So basically, again, the numbers are identical except for the m and nth numbers. We're also going to assume that the two numbers satisfy the ISBN and we should point out that the ISBN 10 check digit scheme can be represented in this way. The sigma represents addition of digits 1 through 10 and these parts show that with k starting at 1, each consecutive digit is added up but first multiplied by its position in the number. So a sub 5 is multiplied by 5, etc. So then, if the 10-digit number a satisfies this congruence and the 10-digit number b satisfies this congruence, then the two congruences can be set congruent to each other. So remember that we said that the numbers a and b are equal to each other for all the digits except for their mth and nth digits, which means that all the equal terms on both sides of this congruence can just be subtracted away for the same reason that if you had x plus 4 equals y plus 4, you could just get rid of the 4s. They're equal, so you can get rid of them. So then we're left with m a sub m plus n a sub n is congruent to m b sub m plus n b sub n. And you'll notice that these are the same color because they're the same digits. We said that a sub m equals b sub n and a sub n equals b sub m because they're switched. So then since they're the same, since these two digits are the same and these two digits are the same, we can just use the same symbol to represent them. So now m a sub m plus n a sub n is congruent to m a sub n plus n a sub m. We're just using the same symbol. And it's all modulo 11. So then we can subtract everything to one side and get m a sub m plus n a sub n minus m a sub n minus n a sub m is congruent to 0 modulo 11. Then we can factor out some things and get m times a sub n minus a sub n plus n times a sub n minus a sub m is congruent to 0 modulo 11. We've just factored out the m and the n. Then we can regroup terms and get m minus n in parentheses times a sub m minus a sub n in parentheses is congruent to 0 modulo 11. 
Now we need to take a quick break and remember that the equivalent conditions for congruence theorem states that A being congruent to B modulo N is equivalent to N dividing A minus B, so the two things that are congruent. So if we apply this to our congruence up here, we can see that this first congruence is equivalent to 11 divides m minus n times a sub m minus a sub n. Because here our b is just 0, so there's really a minus 0 here, and that's what that is. Now we also need to remember that the fundamental property of primes tells us if a prime number, p, divides a times b, where a and b are both integers, then that prime number has to divide, or go into without any remainder, a or b. So then if we apply that to this statement down here, we see that because 11 is a prime number, 11 must divide m minus n, or divide a sub m minus a sub n. It has to divide either A or B in this pair of things that are being multiplied. But we know that M and N are both integers in the range 1, 2, through 10. They're either, there's some integer between 1 and 10. We know this because M and N are just numbers that represent some position in those original big 10-digit ISBN numbers that we had, A and B. So M and N, the position in those 10-digit ISBN numbers, cannot be more than 10 or less than 1. So then, 11 can't divide M minus N because there's no subtraction between this range of integers that would produce a number that is divisible by 11. And we know that a sub m and a sub n are integers in the range of 0, 1, through 9, because a sub m and a sub n are just digits in those ISBNs that we were talking about. And a single digit in an ISBN number is either going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. It won't be a double digit. So then we also see that 11 cannot divide a sub m minus a sub n because, again, there's no subtraction that could take place between this range of integers that would produce a number divisible by 11. Because neither of these conditions can be true, we have reached a contradiction. This means that our assumption that there is a transposition error that the scheme, the check digit scheme for ISBN 10 numbers does not detect is false because we found a contradiction. And so we conclude that the ISBN 10 check digit scheme detects any transposition error. And we proved this using proof by contradiction. This has been a Bullis Student Tutor video. If you liked the video and found it helpful, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out all our other great tutoring videos on our YouTube page. Thank you.